let's just start recording this lesson and today we're gonna see um deal with or start to deal with allophones on the blog there is some um, powerpoint material that uploaded a few minutes ago later you will have a look at it yes but for now i will start uh, sharing the screen and you will try to catch up everything you can and start explaining and then we can discuss about it okay okay i will start explaining and then we can participate and share all together so that's why i have enabled the waiting room for this session so i cannot so everyone can uh, join the lesson and have no problem in waiting for me to admit them. I'm sorry if my voice is a little bit uh, chunky, but um, I have a, a little sore throat today. But it's not coronavirus, don't worry. Don't worry, I'm not gonna lie. If, you, if it's mm -hmm. that what you want. Um, okay, let me share. Okay, hello for the ones who have just uh, shared. Hi. Hello. Okay, let's start with a little introduction about all phones. Yeah, today we will see what an allophone is, what's the difference between allophones, what's the difference between phonemic versus an allophonic transcription, what, how can we find or how can we distinguish between allophones in free variation and allophones in complementary distribution, as you can see in the screen. Can, I, can anyone see the screen? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. All of you can see what I'm seeing? Yes. yes. Okay. If you're not, if you cannot see, please tell me and I will share the screen again. Um, and then finally, I'm going to introduce you to the full list, um, to the full list of uh, RP and general American allophones. Okay. Okay. Good. Very That's good. Okay. So, first of all, you have seen in, and I asked you in previous uh, lessons, in previous tasks, to define or to try to differentiate an allophone from a phoneme. Can you give me both a definition of allophone and both a definition of a phoneme, please? I asked you on previous task, actually on the first one, which was all about general theory. The first or the second one, I don't remember actually. Please, anyone? Nobody knows a definition of allophone and the and definition I of a phoneme. Mm -hmm. Allophones are different um, ways of saying the phonemes depending on the context or. Uh huh. Hello? I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. I'm listening. <laughs> I'm sorry. sorry. I, I, I don't actually know who you are because I cannot see even. Uh, uh, the... Jasmine. Okay. Jasmine Hello, here. Jasmine. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for Hello. your contribution. How, how would you say again what an allophone is? Allophones are different, uh, different realizations of phonemes mm -hmm. in different contexts. Mm -hmm. And phonemes would be like the smallest unit of sound. Mm -hmm. 
So for example, uh, um, plosives. Yeah. Uh, in a particular context, they are aspirated and in some others they are not. So that's, the aspiration would be an allophone of that sound. That Excellent. Point. Excellent. Very good. Very good. So we can say that an allophone, yeah, cuando quiera, no? an allophone is in phonetic, <laughs> an allophone is one of a set of multiple possible spoken sounds or phones yo voy a tirar un gato por la ventana en cualquier momento, disculpa eh, or phones or signs used to pronounce a single phoneme in a particular language as Jasmine says it uh, are the different ways in which we can pronounce or articulate the same sound in different contexts, okay? You will see later that we have, for example, three ways of um, pronouncing the uh, alveolar lateral sound. Yeah, we can have a uh, voicing in that sound, and then we can have a um, regular or light lateral sound. And finally, we can have as well dark L, which is another variant of that and the same can happen for um the voiceless alveolar plosive sound yeah we can have it normal yeah when it's preceded by another alveolar sound you will see that later i will explain that to you and then we can have it aspirated for example or dentalized and you will see that as well so in more simple words when we are defined an allophone, we can say that allophones, uh, phonetic, sorry, deals with allophones while phonology deals with phonemes, even though you may have think that it was the other way around. No. Allophones, as the definition said, is the different ways, the different variations of the same sound. So that it's concerned in phonetics and phonology it's the organization of those sounds into patterns yeah that can be found in every language that's why a phoneme yeah every single phoneme is studied by phonology yeah the different kinds of uh, consonant sound the different kinds of vowel sounds all those, uh, all those realizations are um, studied in phonology. So far, so good? Yes. ¿O se durmieron? Yes. ¿Se durmieron? <laughs> tengo que gritar, tengo no. que estar los gritos, tengo que estar los gritos, porque así no es esto, igual que cuando estábamos presencial. Good. <coughs> Consequently, we can also say that the wrong choice of phonemes may lead to different meaning but the wrong choice of allophones will only lead to a foreign accent or another dialect, says the final part of the text. Okay, can anyone explain, someone explain that, um, that idea? What does it mean, a wrong choice in phoneme? We can have different meanings between words. What would it be? And what would it be examples of that? Jamie, no. Jamie ya contestó. Somebody else. So, in order to answer that, you have to think in the different um, phonetic phonetic content parts. Yes, my internet is unstable like my whole life uh, and don't know where can you hear me can you still hear me yes okay we will continue until the the internet is absolutely dead um so i repeat how would you explain 
through an example. This part of the definition that says, we can say that the wrong choice of a name may lead to different meanings, but the wrong choice of allophones will only lead to a foreign accent or another dialect. What does it mean? Can you think of an example to explain that? Phonemic counterparts. Nobody? Hello? Se cortó? Or what? No, I'm okay. still here, but I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, so? Can you think well, of, for example? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Jamin, no. Jamin, okay. no. Dije. Okay, pero, sorry. Pero, chamiga. Uh huh. I'm listening. Somebody else. Nobody can think of an example. Of, of something very simple, like phonemic counterparts. Words that we change one sound over the other, just one sound. Otherwise, they would sound absolutely the same. Could be, for example, buzz and buzz. Those are homophones. But they have a different phoneme. Boss and buzz in, in meaning. Exactly. Yes, you're right. You're right. Yeah, one takes a um, voiced sound, a buzz, yeah, like a vibration made by a by an insect. That's the what you are talking about. Yes. Good. And the other, like the, the means of transport, very good. Very good. And that, yeah, the wrong choice of phoneme in those two words will have different words. So if you just pronounce or mispronounce one of the words, the other, what sounds or your idea will sound absolutely crazy and have no um, logic, you will say. Exactly. Let's go back to the idea and for example so i made more or less with my bare hands and like an awful handwriting so don't worry uh, you just concentrate on what it says not on the rest uh, at phonetic level so we have allophones like i told you we have three kinds of um, realizations for the same lateral sound and two possible but even more realizations for the same alveolar voiceless plosive sound. I just wrote two as an example and at phonological level we have phonemes. Yeah, phonemes are the simple sound without any kind of alteration in the in the pronunciation and without being affected by any other sound yeah something that is very yeah. important to say that and you will see all the way through the different allophones and the the explanation and study and analysis of allophones that you will see that all of the allophones occur one in most of the, like I can say the 70% of allophones occur one as consequence of the other. If we don't have one kind of allophone applied previously, the following allophone 
occurred into a rule at least wouldn't be possible to occur. Yeah, all of them are connected. Connected to mainly, mainly, this is the most important part. That's why I, I'm so annoying with learning the three names of the sounds of the consonant on and all of the of the characteristic of vowels because if you know the articulation of consonant sound you will master allophones everything about allophones is about out articulation of sounds that's the key of allophones you understand yes, yes. 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 Am, am, mm -hmm. I, am I going too fast and you are completely lost and you are not telling me because you are too lazy or it's just my imagination? <laughs> am I going too fast? No. no. Are you sure you're not lying? Yes. <laughs> oh, please don't lie to me. Don't lie to me because today my throat is like not working. So please don't make me angry. And so bear in mind that if you don't learn perfectly all the three aspects that concern a consonant sound, it would be very difficult for you to understand and acquire the alphabets. That's all I have to say about this slide. Then we can move to the following. Phonemic versus allophonic transcription. To have a clear understanding, says the image, of one to use a phonemic or allophonic transcription, we must go back to the definition of phonetics as the study of phonic substance and its function in its spoken language. Yeah, the function in its spoken language, that's the most important part. With this definition, as we have previously dealt with me faltó ahí que echarle tipo para que quede, pero tipo right now le tipo agregan uh, are enclosed to fundamental aspects. Firstly, it refers to substance or vocal noise, yeah, the raw material of which uh, sounds are made, yeah, the pure and simple uh, sounds, rather vowel or consonant that we articulate when we speak. That's vocal noise, that mere vocal noise, yeah. This aspect is studied by phonetics without capital letters, yeah. The second aspect refers to the way in which this vocal noise is organized in order to produce systematic and meaningful communication. The second aspect is studied by phonology, yeah, it's more or less what I said. So if you have to, because this was as well a question on the first task, what, how would you say each kind of transcription corresponds to which kind of, which part of the phonetics study? Phonemic is part of which kind of transcription and allophonic is part of which kind of transcription? Chicos, si ustedes no... Bro, transcription. Ajá. Uh -huh. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, for a bro, transcription here is... With... It's for phonology. Sorry. Hi, Again. Carla. Yes. Are you listening to me? Yeah, I am. Broad transcription is referred to phonology, I think, and narrow transcription is about phonetics. Which one, which one is allophonic transcription and which one is phonemic transcription? Narrow transcription is allophonic. Mm -hmm. And broad, transcript, broad, uh, broad transcription is phonemics. Are you sure what you're saying? Absolutely sure. Yes. 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 Okay. Where did where did you learn that? 
From you? Where did the you? Okay, class? okay, Yoidin. If if Maya completely liar to you, <laughs> if I'm not saying you're not even supposed to grab a book or something. Okay. Yeah. Good. Let's go back. Chicos, eh, si esto no es una lecture en la que yo explico todo el power y acá nadie dice una palabra. Si le dije una y mil veces, esto es para ustedes. No están obligados a conectarse, si no quieren conectarse directamente dicen no quiero conectarme, o ni aparecen. O sea, tipo, sin excusa, sin nada. No pasa nada. Pero si van a estar acá, hagan su mayor y máximo y más potente esfuerzo por dos horitas. Dos horitas, no les pido tanto. En tratar de entender, ¿sí? Presten atención como si fuera esto una clase presencial, porque el día que retomemos las clases presenciales, ¿sí? Jesus Christ, tipo, me toca así con su recontra varita mágica, eh, y volvemos, y yo me puedo volver a parar frente al pizarrón a explicar todo esto, yo no voy a arrancar del principio. ¿Sí? ¿Se entiende? Sí. Bien, bien. Si no entienden, hablen ahora o callen para siempre. Carla. Sí. Eh, esto Antes último no lo entendí bien. Sí, lo de broad y narrow transcription. Ok, yo les tengo... Con lo que yo les, estabas hablando. Sea, yo les tengo que retar, en para que me, les los tengo que retar para que me digan, chicos, si no entienden, me dicen, o, 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 o sea, o voy va a seguir con tu duda hasta, hasta la tumba, ¿no, tío? No, o pero me recién me di cuenta que no lo ah. entiendo cuando lo hablamos. Bueno, me dicen, Carla, porque si no hay yo... Una manera como de, de que lo expliques no solo con el PowerPoint, por ejemplo, haciendo vos video y, no sé, otra manera? Es que mi corazoncito ternurito, algodoncito de azúcar. Esto es una mera introducción teórica, explicativa, uh -huh. de qué son los alephones, de cómo los vamos a dar, de cómo los voy a desarrollar. ¿Sí? ¿Sí? ¿Está? Gracias. ¿Sí? Muy Eso, amable. Eh, ay, bueno, de nada. Ah, esto, mm. es, esto es solamente... Eh, introductorio explicándoles qué es, cuáles son los tipos, cuáles son sus características más básicas, la diferencia entre una transcripción de primer año, que es lo que ustedes saben hacer y ya estuvimos haciendo hasta ahora, y transcripción que vamos a aprender a partir de este momento en adelante, que son transcripciones alofónicas, que es en lo cual nos vamos a introducir. ¿O no estamos introduciendo okay. en este momento? Y te pregunto por las uh -huh. dudas, yo me conecté tarde, por eso te vuelvo uh -huh. a preguntar. Okay. ¿El power este lo vas a subir al blog o lo vamos a tener en algún it's lado? It's already there. It's already there. Yeah, okay. it's already on the different blogs. And además de todo eso, por ahí eh, es, un, es un poquito difícil eh, grabarme videos haciendo yo las transcripciones. Entonces, como hice ahora, ¿sí? Ajá. Que ya, ya estoy haciendo los próximos powers para todo el desarrollo de los halophones, voy a ir explicando, voy a ir sacando fotos a ejemplos que yo vaya haciendo, que yo vaya escribiendo en el pizarrón, claro, sí. o, porque a, grabarme un video yo mientras escribo y transcribo y, y demás, me lleva mucho tiempo, me lleva sí. mucha edición y además que tengo que hacer todo un armatoste de Hollywood acá arriba, acá en mi comedor para poder filmar el, el pizarrón. Entonces me voy acomodando así con imágenes y a través de compartir pantalla les voy a ir mostrando. ¿Ok? Gracias. Súper. ¿Alguien, ¿Alguien más? ¿Has a doubt before I continue? Eh, yo la duda esa que te dije de broad transcription. Ok, that's, that's exactly what I'm doing. That's, I'm, I'm going back to it. Can you see the, this page that I'm watching, that I'm seeing? Can you see what I'm doing? Can you? Can you? Yes. Yes. Good. Excellent. So, let's go back again to this. To have a clear understanding of when to use phonemic or alphonic transcription, we must go back to the definition of phonetics. 
do you remember that on the first task you had a question or a yeah a question or or part of the task that says to define phonetics with capital letters and phonetic phonetics without capital letters do you remember that part of the first task yeah. okay yes this is about that so if you read properly for answering that task it will be easier for you to understand this phonetics with capital letters is the study of phonic substance and its function in its spoken language yeah we have phonetic like the big phonetics like with sorry phonetics like the big title and from that it comes two smaller definitions or two branches from phonetics with capital letters yeah it derives or it has two branches which is phonetics without capital letters and phonetic for phonology yeah yeah okay mm -hmm. Así tipo como en crioso vamos a hacerlo. Phonetics con mayúscula es como la mamá. La mamá tiene dos hijitos. Una nena que se llama phonetics con minúscula y otro varón o otra nena o whatever que es phonology con mayúscula que es independiente. Sí. ¿Sí? ¿Se entiende o sea, la diferencia entre mayúscula y minúscula? Sí. Uh -huh. sí. Yes. Phonetics with capital letters is the study of... It's the science. Exactly. It's the science which is complementary. Linguistic science. Yeah, it's a part of... A, it's a complementary study of a linguistic. Yeah, it's not a branch of linguistic. A branch of linguistic is phonetics without capital letter. Okay. Yes. And me perdí. Okay, yeah, within this definition, we have these two aspects. Yeah, phonetics with capital letters is about everything that concerns to sounds. Yeah, the articulation and the material and, and the production and self and isolated production of sounds. Yeah, which is phonetics without capital letters and how those sounds are arranged and put together to form words. Yeah, which is studied in phonology. Phonology, yes. Okay. Can you now understand? Yes. You promise? <laughs> yes. Okay, good. No, porque no quiero continuar si no entienden, porque para eso estamos teniendo las clases. O sea, la, 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 si me tengo que pasar las dos horas seguir aplicando el mismo, el mismo concepto. Uh, no, Carla, uh, Carla, uh, uh, Carla. Uh, uh, eh, eso, lo, eh, eso me quedó claro. Ahora, uh -huh. broad transcription, viste que dijiste que tenía como una relación con la, fono, con la fonética y la fonología, eh, con los alófonos, algo así. Exacto. Eso no lo entendí. Ok, I'm going uh -huh. to that. Ya, yeah, sí. Eh, ¿Puedes repetir la diferencia entre phonetics con mayúscula y con minúscula? Ok, vamos de vuelta así tipo a la, la yes. relación mamá-hijo. Uh -huh. ¿Sí? Phonetics con mayúscula que están habiendo acá, que yo tipo estoy circuleando con, uh -huh. con, con el cursor. Eh, eso es, es como la mamá. ¿Sí? La mamá hermana de las demás ciencias de la lingüística. Sí, la hermana, eh, la mamá hermana de la semántica, de la sintáctica, del análisis del discurso, de la gramática, ¿sí? Esa, esa fonética es hermana de todas las otras, ¿sí? Es la ciencia más grande. Esa fonética con mayúscula tiene una hija, que es la fonética con minúscula, ¿sí? Esa fonética uh -huh. con, minú con minúscula es la que ustedes estudiaron en fonética 1. 
la producción, la articulación y todo lo que tenga que ver con oralizar los, los sonidos, cómo los articulamos, cómo los producimos, qué articuladores intervienen y demás. ¿Sí? Para que nosotros podamos hablar de la forma en la que hablamos en cualquier idioma sea, esos sonidos se articulan, se juntan, se agrupan para formar palabras. ¿Sí? Esa distribución, organización y arrangement es estudiado por la fonología. ¿Sí? Uh -huh. Uno es sí, sí. la producción específica de los sonidos. ¿Sí? En castellano, A, E, I, O, U. La fonología es <coughs> cómo yo hago para esas cinco vocales formen parte de grupos más grandes de sonidos, que son las palabras. ¿Se entiende más o menos? Sí. Good. Como que la fonología es la que se encarga de organizar todo el resto. Exactamente, se encarga de organizar las consonantes con las vocales para que se, pro, se pueda producir palabras. No importa ni el idioma en el que estés hablando. Esto, esto eh, deberían eh, tenerlo así, tipo, soc, clavado dentro del corazón de Fonética 1. ¿eh? Súper internalizado. Por eso es que estamos repasando con mucha eh, precisión en cada uno de estos términos, porque no se puede pasar de alto, no pueden avanzar en las diferentes fonéticas si no tienen en claro qué estudia cada una. Ok. The second, um, so within this definition, as we have previously dealt with, are enclosed two fundamental aspects. Firstly, it refers to some substance or vocal noise, the raw material of which sounds are made. This aspect is studied by phonetics without cancel letters. And the second aspect referred to the way in which This vocal noise is organized in, in order to produce the systematic and meaningful communication, blah, blah, blah. This is a study in phonology. Yeah? Okay. okay. So, summing up. Phonemes. Yeah? The smallest sound that we can produce. Yeah? Concerns mm -hmm. to phonology. Why? Because those sounds are the ones that are organized in phonology, yeah? How I do uh, arrange together different voiceless plosive sounds with vowels, and if we have a voiceless plosive, I will need for certain another voiceless, because you know, voiceless plus voiceless, and so on, that it's studies. And that is a matter of phonology. And all this is enclosed by slant lines. On the other hand, we have allophones, which concerns to phonetics. Why? Because it's a different way. Yeah, as I showed you on the third image, it's the different ways in which I can pronounce the same sound. The lateral sound, this one, in different contexts and for different purposes. I can pronounce it like this, the voice, yeah? I can pronounce it like this, with this diacritic, which is, yeah, um, sorry, above the, the lateral sound, which is dentalization. And the third one, which is dark L, yeah, that I will give you the rules which, or where, or when, do we have to use it? And the same happens with these two examples. I only add two samples because otherwise I will have, have to make a bigger image. Two examples of two different realizations of the same 
um, voiceless plosive sound. Let's go back to this. So phonemic or broad transcription consists of a set <coughs> of conventionally defined symbols and rules that must be followed in order to give each symbol the correct value. Records only the other, the order, sorry, in which the segments occur, arranged into patterns. On the other hand, yeah, we have allophonic or narrow transcription. It's the actual realization of each phoneme. It consists of a set of symbols and diacritics, yeah, like I showed you, that little circle above the um, the lateral sound, uh, that teeth or that inverted uh, C that was above the lateral and above the alveolar plosive, those are called diacritics. I will explain that again later. That are used to give extra information of each sound with a great deal of precision. Yes? So far, yes. do you understand yes. this, this difference? Yes. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Amila, you understand? Yes. Yeah. Good. So, concerning that aspect, we have two kinds of phallophones. One in free variation. I will try to explain it all in these two minutes, and I will start another session for uh, explain this part again. We have allophones in complementary distribution and free variation. Allophones in complementary distribution are those that can never occur in the place of another, yeah? One cannot substitute the, one allophone cannot substitute the other. They are mutually exclusive, yeah? Because one, as I said, when one occurs, no one, no other can. For example, the three lateral sounds that I showed you on the first image and the two alveolar plosive sounds are said to be in complementary distribution because one form of that the same sound cannot replace the other. Yeah, it can only happen that one or that one, N not any other. You have to use that allophone, yeah, that cannot be replaced by another way of the same allophone, okay? Then we have okay. allophones in free variation, are those in which the selection or of one variant or the other is a matter of uh, um, speaker's personal habits or preference, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. So that will be a matter of choice, for example, between RP pronunciation and American pronunciation and the use of the allophones may and actually vary a lot. So, and that will we see later again. Okay, we are having less than a minute and I'm making another uh, session for you to join again, okay? Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Hello, okay. Martin.